As per my usual thing, I'll be taking a couple minutes to show you guys the overall physical characteristics of the GTX 560 Ti or Ti compared to some other video cards. So right here I've actually got two GTX 560 Ti's. One is an MSI Cyclone 2 Edition card and the other one is a reference design from NVIDIA. So first I want to compare these two for you guys. They both have the same power connectors. They both have the same DVI mini HDMI mix. They both use PCI Express 16. They both have an SLI connector, but there's a couple of things that are different. First of all, the MSI card has a cooler that protrudes over the top of the card itself, over the top of the PCB. So if you have a side fan on your case, you want to make sure you're going to have enough clearance between a standard card and where this uh, blade heatsink extends to in order for the card to be installed without any clearance issues. So that's one thing to be aware of. Also, the MSI card has a little stiffening plate on the PCB that should prevent any warping um, when you're moving the case or if it's being shipped to you or whatever the case may be. So that's a pretty nice little feature as well. I'm going to go ahead and flip both of these cards over. Uh, the reference card is a fairly different cooler. It has just a single uh, sort of flower style heat sink underneath, no heat pipes, no fins, nothing like that compared to the MSI cooler so it shouldn't run quite as cool or as quietly as the aftermarket cooled card. Now if you look at the back you can see that the cards are actually identical in terms of overall layout. So we've got six memory modules on the back We've got our standard, yeah, yeah, SLI connectors are all in the same place, display connectors are all in the same place, PCI connectors are all in the same place, and every little trace on the back of these PCBs is the same. So MSI has only really modified the cooler and potentially some of the components on the board, although it would be pretty difficult to verify something like that without taking off the coolers. Let's see. Yeah, that'd be pretty tricky to have a look at without taking off these coolers. But they have definitely altered the cooler, but not the layout of the PCB. So there you go. Okay, so let's put the MSI one aside and I'm going to compare the 550 Ti in terms of physical characteristics to the 560 Ti as well as the GeForce GTX 570, not Ti. So here, I'm just going to grab my... Uh, Grab my tape measure here, just want to show you guys. So if you have enough clearance in your case, like if you got a Corsair Obsidian 800D or something, you know, some ludicrous accepts anything case like that, then you don't have to worry about this part of the video. But I just want to tell you guys that the PCB on the 550 Ti is about, it's just a little over, okay, so let's, let's do centimeters. Everyone always complains that I don't use centimeters in my videos. So it is 21 centimeters long, and that compares against the 560 Ti, which is a more advanced GPU, has a more advanced cooler, etc., etc., etc. Uh, it's also more expensive, which uh, comes in at 23 centimeters. And finally, to the 570, which is 20, just under 27 centimeters long. So it's quite a small card, but you expect that from this sort of class of GPU. But since NVIDIA says that it is designed for performance at 1680 by 1050 or lower, that's pretty much what we would want because you're not going to be throwing that in your 800D with your, you know, maximum overclocked 6 core Intel processor, etc, etc. This is more for like a value gamer build and you want to make sure that it's going to be able to fit in a case that's appropriate for a value gaming build. Thank you for checking out my length and physical characteristics comparison of the GTX 550 Ti reference from NVIDIA as well as the MSI Cyclone 2 GTX 550 Ti.